Uh, this is the first time I'm going to be addressing the community and my capacity as a Honda Iede ne Radizahayas. So I just wanted to touch base, give you an overview on some of the things that have been happening. Uh, it's been a month now, today is August 5th. Uh, Happy birthday to my Duda uh, Gorniawi Annie Thomas, who turns 85 today, and also to my father-in-law, Freddie Kirby, turning 82. So it's a great day, a beautiful day today. And, uh, you know, ever since uh, July 3rd, uh, the council has been in an orientation phase, basically, uh, getting the new chiefs up to date on all of the different uh, files and things that are going on within the MCK and how uh, I guess we function, uh, what decision making looks like, um, what council meetings look like, and uh, strategic discussions. They've been doing uh, unit and site visits uh, for the last little while, and we actually even did some trauma training, which I think was very important given the climate in the community right now, and you know the consistent finding of more mass graves. I believe the number now is at 5,296. <laughs> Oh my God, I just got attacked by a bee. And um, so, yeah, it's definitely causing, you know, some very sad feelings in the community. And I think it's important for us to have gone through that training uh, so that we could address community members, you know, when they're feeling uh, all these very sad and, and negative feelings as well, because we had just gone through uh, a year of people doing their application for the uh, Indian Day School settlement. So. I guess a lot of people's uh, experiences have been brought to the forefront uh, in these schools and maybe even in residential schools. So, you know, it's important for us to be able to engage with community and steer them in the right direction if they want to uh, get help and start on their healing journey. And I think, you know, that's been a primary component of uh, some of the meetings we've been having in the community is, uh, you know, I think there's a recognition that, um, you know, after 500 years plus of oppression, that there's a lot of things that we have experienced as a people, as Ungwe Hunwe, even as Ganyagahaga, even right here in this community, and that, uh, you know, we're at a crossroads in our existence. And I think the young people of today, you know, um, also need to be a part of the conversation and where their history and, you know, is going to move into. Um, you know, we're all here for a short period of time. You know, I'm just one person. I didn't think I'm gonna change the world, change the town or anything like that, but offer what I know and the experiences that I have and the fact that I've been at the council table now for 12 years and I felt that, you know, I was ready for this challenge. Uh, there's definitely a lot of work uh, ahead. We are gonna be going through a priority setting session for the council uh, probably in the next month or so after we do portfolio distribution. And uh, yeah, this afternoon I'll even be participating in a strategic plan with Dewaduni Zakta. So it's important for collaboration between the organizations. Like I said, it can't rest on the shoulders of the MCK alone in terms of all of the, the work and things that we need to address uh, in this term specifically. You know, I'm, I'm just looking at in a three year increment. Uh, this is the mandate that I have been given by the community. And, and again, Yawakoa for your support and putting you know, your name behind mine to uh, hopefully bring about some change. Um, you know, I hope I bring a different perspective. It's the first time we've had a, a woman uh, Grand Chief in Ganawage, so I think it's exciting times. Also looking around the country and all of the different appointments that have happened recently. Um, if you're not aware, the AFN um, Assembly nominated a woman for the first time ever, uh, Roseanne Archibald. Her and I have been touching base quite consistently and hoping to set up a meeting. And then, of course, the appointment of Mary Simon as the Governor General, first time Indigenous woman in that role. And then recently also uh, the Grand Chief of the Crees on um, July 29th is also the first time that they'll have a woman in that post. So I'm looking to coordinate a meeting, um, hopefully with the four of us, maybe even right here in, in Ganawage territory. Uh, I did have a couple of important meetings already. I had a lunch meeting with Pierre Paul Routier, who is the mayor of Lachine regarding the um, you know, the land dispute there on the end of the OCR. I also had a first uh, meeting with uh, Minister Lafreniere, who is the Indigenous uh, Affairs Minister on behalf of Quebec. 
And uh, basically what we agreed is that we're going to meet monthly. We're going to try to establish a uh, relationship framework between Gahnawage and uh, the Quebec government, which I think has been outstanding for a very long time. We have a lot of issues and a lot of things to deal with. So um, once this framework we hope to have completed by, I'll say, end of September, then I would look to have the first meeting with uh, Premier Legault, hopefully in, in mid-October. So a lot of exciting things on the horizon, but also some concerning things. I mean, we all know that we're still in the midst of, of COVID-19 and there's still a pandemic around us. You know, the fact that now we have to be concerned about the Delta variant, which is here in the community, apparently spreads much more faster and more highly contagious. So people still need to remain vigilant, although we've been able to kind of, you know, lower the directives and keep our guards down. People got vaccinated. There's still uh, a number of people in the community that are not vaccinated. So, you know, we all kind of, if you're in public spaces, we need to continue with the masking and distancing and so forth. You know, I know every, it's everybody's individual choice, but at the end of the day, it's that, we know you, you probably have strong immunity and that you'll get over it, but it's still our elders and vulnerable population and people who have uh, immune suppressed um, health, you know, that we need to be looking out for. So I think that's also um, something we need to stay cogniz cognizant of, stay vigilant on and, uh, you know, do our, our best to, to protect the community. Um, I do have a meeting coming up next Tuesday uh, with Minister Bennett. Uh, who is the uh, Indigenous Affairs Minister for the federal government. And the meeting will be about the scenery of Sault Ste. Louis. So there has been no movement on this file for a significant number of years now. So I'm very uh, excited about the prospect of having this meeting and what could potentially come about. I think uh, it's, it's very important um, to hear where some of the stagnancy I guess came from and I guess lack of willingness to to give uh, time energy and effort on this file we know it's very important to us in terms of getting land back so I will definitely be reporting on the outcome of that meeting in the next little while so needless to say I've definitely hit the ground running the council has been um, you know meeting with various community groups uh, we do know that there's still an issue uh, happening with with the church and um, a group of people, um, you know, that has been meeting there weekly. So we've, we've been there participating, meeting with the church committee. Um, we also made sure to attend that the, uh, the OCR uh, land um, occupation and let them know that we're in support. So a lot of, a lot of things have happened in a month, uh, needless to say, and I wouldn't have expected anything less. You know, there's always a lot going on in Ganawage. Uh, a lot of positive things also. Uh, this past Sunday, I was a part of, um, you know, presenting scholarships on behalf of Garunya Rasta's uh, uh, Kateri Memorial Foundation scholarships for students that are pursuing uh, health sciences careers. And uh, it's just nice to see, you know, a young Gahnawage Hirono pursuing uh, their goals, their, their aspirations, and the fact that they want to you know, take that education and give back to the community. And that's what we, you know, would always hope and encourage. That was what was done for myself as a young person growing up in Ganawage, you know, taking advantage of uh, the, the resources we have, the supports in our community. I think it's always important to keep in mind that we're very fortunate to come from Ganawage, that uh, there's so much for us. So we always have to look at the positives. And um, although we're in a very trying time right now, that's the message I want to keep to all of you. Stay positive, love on your, your, the children and your families, hug them, tell them you love them because they need to hear that. You know, there might've been a generation that missed out on that because of the experiences of our people, but um, it's time for a better future. So with that, I will uh, say ona giwahi for now and uh, talk again soon, ona.